Hey everyone, it's good to see you. Um, it's Olivia, and it is Thursday, and I haven't done a video in a really long time. And it's largely been due to the fact that I was student teaching, so I think I mentioned that before I stopped making videos for a while, but um, for the last several months I've been student teaching at a high school, and <clears throat> that kind of consumed my entire life, <laughs> because I... I just want you all to know, teachers do a lot of work, and so you should appreciate the teachers that you or your children have, because, man, I was literally spending about 10 hours at school a day, and then I would do my, four, I had a 40-minute 40, uh, 40 commute, and so then I had to drive home, and then I had to do some more work, because I had to create an entire curriculum from scratch literally kind of while I was teaching it. So like I'd create my lessons on the weekend or at least plan what I was going to do for the week and then be making things like during the week while I was, it was a lot of work. I really loved it, but it was, it was so time consuming. And if it had just been that, it wouldn't have been as bad. But I also had this huge um, project due called the Ed TPA, which is something they're just kind of starting to do with teachers where I had to do these three different tasks during student teaching. And so like the first task, um, about 12 pages, single space about all of the lessons that I'm creating. So I had to do commentary for that much about the lessons that I created and I had to submit all of the lesson plans and supporting materials that I needed and then task two, I had to tape myself teaching for three to five hours. And then I had to do commentary on that. And then finally, I had to do more commentary about the results from my students. And I had to analyze the data that I had collected and give some commentary on that. And so everything was just extremely overwhelming because you're doing that at the same time that you're trying to teach something that you probably haven't taught before like me. I taught psychology, guys. I taught psychology. I've taken one class in my entire life in psychology. And then I had to teach it. So, and teach it at a high school level, too. The class that I took was a college-level psychology class. And so the types of things that are covered are totally different. And so it really just, it was hard for me because it's never been, you know, my most comfortable subject. and. That's just, I think it went really well. Um, my kids were great, most of them. I mean, there were a few kids that just, like, didn't care for me because I am really strict about cell phone use. I don't let kids use their phone in my classroom. And if I give them a warning and they still don't listen, then I'll just take their phone for the class period. And a lot of kids didn't really like that because <clears throat> the school didn't have a set policy about how to handle that necessarily. And so a lot of kids had not had that really happen to them before, so they didn't like that. But some actually on my little critique at the end, I give out this handout that just, okay, what did you like? What did you not like? What would you change if I were to teach this again? Blah, blah, blah. And some kids actually said that they liked that I took their phone because they felt like they learned more and they paid attention better. But then, of course, then on the opposite side, I had kids that were like, you shouldn't take our phones blah 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 and then uh, you know on the section where it said what was your favorite part about the class they'd say like it that it's done and I know exactly <laughs> who wrote that and I have taken his phone many a time so I don't think he appreciates that but you kids these days don't understand how reliant they are on their cell phones and it's scary because I was in high school five years ago and Things weren't even this bad. I mean, five years, things have totally changed. They can't even sit through a class period without pulling out their phone at least five times. It's an addiction. It's completely an addiction. And kids are not the only guilty parties. I know that sometimes when we're having meetings and stuff, teachers will be pulling out their phones and, like, doing stuff on their phones that isn't work-related. And I just think that that is so rude. I don't know. I, again, I have a cell phone. I have a smartphone. I'm not against cell phones. I think they have a lot of good things about them, but people are addicted and it's scary a little bit because 
I kid you not, I was talking to my cooperating teacher. So that's the person that I was working in her classroom and she was observing me and giving me detailed notes. Um, she did this, ex this thing last year when she was teaching psychology and I did not do this, but where she actually collected everyone's cell phones at the beginning of the week. And then she held them in her classroom for an entire week. And she said that there were kids coming into her room after two days, like shaking because they wanted to check their phone so bad. It is an addiction. And it's, so frustrating as a teacher to have to be policing that because I don't want to be spending my time saying, hey, give me your phone. It's distracting and it takes time. But at the same time, if I let it go unchecked, then they think that that's okay and they aren't paying attention. And anytime a kid tries to tell me that they're paying attention when they're doing that, I just can't even. <laughs> Sorry, do I sound like a cranky old person yet? I... And it just frustrates me. And if you're what I'm going to be seam ripping while I talk to you, because this is, um, I am, I guess I can just jump into the craft stuff now that I've just ranted to you for six minutes. Sorry about that. I just, that's my life right now. Um, so I haven't been doing a ton of knitting. <clears throat> I am currently working on a sweater that I started, I think before this new year. So it's been on the needles for a while, but I had to put it aside because as I mentioned earlier, I had very little free time while I was teaching. I mean, very, very little free time. It's terrifying how little time I really had. Um, cause I have about two and a half weeks off now and I feel like, Oh my God, I can accomplish so much craft wise. This is amazing. It feels so nice. So, um, Anyway, so I was working on that. I'm still working on it. I have, I'm have i working on the back piece. It's a cardigan. I think it's called the Paloma cardigan. So I'll insert a picture of that here. And <clears throat> it's a really pretty cardigan I'm using. I don't have it on me right now, which is why I'm not showing it to you. Um, but it's, it's done in double seed stitch, or moss stitch, I guess is what some people refer to it. And it's just kind of a pain in the ass, but it's going to be really nice when it's done. And it's going to be a very bulky, chunky sweater, which I really like. Because as you know, I live in Minnesota, and it gets cold here, so I have to make sure I have warm stuff. Um, so I've been working on that. But... Ultimately, I, that, I literally just picked that up from a week or two ago. So I, before that, as far as knitting projects went, I finished um, a baby bunting. I, I kept thinking cardigan, cardigan. That's not what I was trying to say, bunting. So I finished a baby bunting for an order for someone on my Etsy store. So I'll include a picture of that at the end. And then that same person ordered a little frog hat. And that was really fun to make. It was very quick. I did that in about two evenings because it's a baby thing. But even that, I could have knocked that out, you know, in a few hours, easy. <clears throat> but I didn't have that many hours strung together that I could actually sit down and do something. So it took me longer than I anticipated. But it was fine. Um, I'm trying to think of what else I could. I think that's honestly, like, the major things that I finished, I have, there's one other thing that I crocheted that I have finished since then. And I did a bunch of headbands too. I guess I should mention this. I had a craft show <clears throat> at the beginning of March at a figure skating competition and I was literally the only vendor and I sold a lot of stuff. Because I've also been making jewelry lately. I don't know. Some of you, if you're friends with me on Facebook, um, you probably know that. I just, I just make so much jewelry it's an addiction don't start doing that unless you are ready to invest a lot of money because it is it costs a lot and it takes a long time but anyway so that happened and I did really well but I had to make a bunch of headbands because I knew they would sell pretty well at a figure skating competition so I probably made like 10 of those before I went and I sold at least 10 so um, then, yeah, then I made this, which is a dress, and I'll put a picture of this at the end. So what I did with this, <clears throat> this is actually a pillowcase that I got from a thrift store, and I just 
made a pattern for a little bodice and I sewed it out of the fabric and it looks so cute on my cousin. I had her model it for me, so that's who's in the picture. And I'm really pleased with it. I again I didn't really have a pattern, I just kinda winged it and I think it's really nice and that if I do some craft shows over the summer then I might be able to sell some of those. That's the thing. When you crochet and you knit and you do craft shows in the summer, your stuff really doesn't go very fast because it's really hot here and humid, 80s and 90s and 100s, and it's just very, very humid outside. So anyway, sorry, I keep touching my face. I'm just, I have to go to the doctor in a little bit, so I don't really want to go. Anyway, physicals. Yay. So fun. I think that's everything that I wanted to cover in this video. I'm trying to catch up on everyone else's videos right now. So it's so good to see videos again. When I was living at my boyfriend's parents' house for student teaching, their internet is so bad that literally I couldn't watch any YouTube videos because it wouldn't load them. And that was really sad for me because I like keeping up with you guys. And honestly, it motivates me to knit and crochet. I've been doing a lot of sewing since I got home to my parents' house. I haven't really done a lot of knitting, and so maybe now that I'm catching up on all of these videos, it'll inspire me, because I just have been on a sewing kick, probably because I went to a thrift store, and I just bought a bunch of fabric that was like bed, I bought bed sheets and curtains and stuff, and I'm ripping everything apart and using the material to make clothes. Because it's very inexpensive, and sewing a piece of clothing takes, muscle, takes much less time than knitting. So that's probably, like this thing that I'm working on right now is going to be a dress. This used to be, um, I know the pattern's kind of bold, but that's totally me. I like big patterns, but this used to be a curtain that someone had clearly just sewn themselves, but it's really, it's very... Um, nice cotton. This probably cost them a lot of money, honestly, and I got it for $3, and I have enough to make this dress, plus I have enough to probably make another skirt or shirt or something. I probably could make another dress out of this, but I don't really need another dress out of the same material, but I'm no expert by any means at sewing, which is exactly why I'm ripping this out right now. I put in this neckline on the v-neck and I really didn't really know at all what I was doing and I probably should have looked at YouTube first to find a video of someone explaining how to do it because I just kind of willy-nilly just did whatever I thought was right and that is not the best way to do stuff sometimes and so I'm ripping it out because I'm not happy with it which is kind of being a pain in the butt because it doesn't want to it doesn't want to come out. But anyway, so I think that's everything. I will put that aside when I say goodbye. So I hope you've all done really well, and I'll see you soon, hopefully. Bye.